Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and the Consumer Electronics Show is officially over, and there's a lot of cool stuff, so this is the coolest stuff I saw at CES 2015. Now every year it feels like about three quarters of the show is a TV showcase. Uh, of course this year there were TVs everywhere, curved TVs, flat TVs, ultra-wide TVs, OLED TVs, quantum dot TVs, not a lot of 3D TVs, which was good, I'm kind of glad 3D is dead, but most of all, everyone had a 4K TV of some kind, which made the pixel lover inside of me very happy. But believe it or not, we also saw multiple 8K TVs, which looked absolutely insane. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of 8K video out there, so these mostly played these constructed demos and time lapses, which looked awesome, uh, but they even looked a lot better than the current 4K TVs to me, which was actually saying something. My favorite TV, though, had to be Sony's super thin 4K Android TV. It came in at something like five millimeters thin, which is thicker than probably the phone you're holding right now. And it was literally so thin that you could grab the corner with two fingers and twist it and it would actually bend a little bit. So obviously not something you want to do with your TV. But to me, that was the most impressive form factor, and it would look pretty badass mounted up on a wall. I gotta say, though, of all the new display technology that's out there, I think my next TV upgrade is gonna have to be OLED. I'm on the lookout this year for a great 4K OLED TV. And if you wanna see, actually, my explanation of that, you can check out my recent Quantum Dot Explained video. I'll leave a link right below that like button. Now, speaking of 4K TVs, we've seen always a whole bunch of ways to watch 4K at CES, so all these 4K TVs. But more than ever now, this year, we're seeing more ways to shoot 4K. So last year, there were one or two major announcements, but this year, there were several new 4K cameras, a couple 4K handycams over at the Sony booth, all for a lower price than last year, and also some of their existing cameras could have 4K shooting unlocked with an external recorder. So that combined with some 4K action cameras and the new 4K GoPro, and you can tell that shooting 4K no longer has to be an ordeal with a huge camera. Anyone can do it and this is gonna be the year of 4K. Now CES has been an increasingly less important show for mobile, but the one smartphone that stood out this year was the LG G Flex 2, for sure. Uh, it's a much improved version of the original G Flex we saw last year in a lot of ways. It now has the form factor that reminds me most of the LG G3. So those back buttons are there, uh, it has the same camera, the laser autofocus, and it reminds me a lot in its shape of the Galaxy Nexus. The biggest improvement here with this phone is the new display. So last year it was this huge 720p super curved display. This year it's a slightly smaller 5.5 inch 1080p slightly less curved OLED display and it looks much better and yes it's still flexible. Uh, it also has a self-healing back and apparently it's supposed to be even better than the original so you know I'm going to try to test that out on video as soon as I can get my hands on it. Another cool thing I saw was the Tesla Model X in the Panasonic booth. So I've talked a lot about Tesla since I showed the Model S in this booth last year, and the Model X is one of the most popular things at the whole show, like it was constantly swarmed even until the last day, but I managed to spend some quality time with this electric prototype crossover and notice some cool things. Number one, the doors. They are pretty obviously different from any other car. They're not butterfly doors, they're not gullwing doors, they're not scissor doors, they're not suicide doors. They're called falcon wing doors, and they have their own unique folding method, so you don't have to nip the car next to you, but you also don't need all that much vertical space to open and close them. Obviously, this is still a prototype, and they open and close kind of slowly and very deliberately, but I guess what's cool is that they open and close by just a button, so the retracted door handles on the back doors just stay retracted. Number two, the seats. The Model X obviously now has three rows of seats. The first row looking pretty standard with some nice white leather seats, stitching, headrests, all that looks fine. Second row of seats looks pretty cool. Obviously all still power adjustable and it switches to uh, this black leather with red stitching. Uh, and it looks like your legroom will be a little bit tight if you're in the middle seat. But really the third row is what you want to take an eye on and really it's accessible by the Falcon Wing doors still and it's supposed to have a decent amount of legroom but I feel like if you're going to have people in all three rows, someone is going to be uncomfortable. Uh, either way, number three is that everything in this car looked a little bit more refined than the interior of the Model S. Obviously that was one of the biggest complaints about the Model S was that the interior didn't look like something you'd find in a similarly priced Mercedes or BMW or something. So it's kind of hard to do that without any buttons or dials or knobs, but the touchscreen had a nicer bezel, all the trim looked a little bit better, it just looked like a much cleaner, much more luxurious interior, even if it's not all that complicated. The steering wheel is also new, it has this two-tone look, and actually it now has touchscreens 
on either side of the steering wheel for media controls, replacing even more of the stuff that was previously knobs. So I'm guessing these will either be programmable or changeable after the fact. I also noticed this version also has side view mirrors, which is only notable because the last version of the Model X I saw uh, had cameras there instead. So yeah, this is the all-electric crossover that is expected to enter production soon from Tesla. But if you're more into some gasoline-powered driving machines, you should definitely take a look at the video I did on all the tech in BMW's cars at their booth outside of the North Hall, which was pretty badass. Some self-driving cars, the i8 is a hybrid, some crazy looking stuff there. Also, Sharp. I think Sharp had one of the best booths at all of CES, honestly. Not only did they have a bunch of their TVs, but they had a ton of these bezel-less displays using the same technology that the Sharp Aquas Crystal smartphone had, and a bunch of these formless displays that you could make really whatever shape you want, which is crazy. And we also saw in that booth a see-through display, which I must say I definitely stared at for a couple of minutes because it was kind of actually blowing my mind. Very cool. Uh, I also want to mention one more thing. There was a bunch of virtual reality stuff all over CES scattered about the floor this year. Uh, and while I was getting footage of it, I realized you are guaranteed to look at least a little bit ridiculous while using it. In fact, the better the demo is, the more ridiculous you look. Uh, either way, CES was a lot of fun. I got to hang out with a bunch of awesome YouTubers that were also all making dope videos. I'll leave some links below so you can check those guys out and the videos they made. And even though there were some things I didn't get to see from companies like Dell and Asus, uh, I had an awesome time, and I'll definitely be checking out a lot of those things in separate upcoming videos this year. So definitely stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.